the renal corpuscle. Fantastic name. Renal, kidney, corpuscle, sounds like something you don't want to have anything to do with. I hope you don't feel that way at the end of talking about this because I think the renal corpuscle is fantastic. The renal corpuscle is where blood comes in contact with kidney and it happens at Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus. If you look here, now of course my pen is the wrong size. Of course it is. So if you look here, you'll see, and, and remember that I said Bowman's capsule is actually like a cup, and it's surrounding this knot of capillaries. We're going to look at the anatomy of this location, but think about it. What is the primary thing that is going to take place here? This is where filtration takes place. I'm going to go write that down over here where I have a lovely picture of Bowman's capsule, the renal corpuscle, that we can actually like dissect. So filtration of the blood happens here. So you have, you know, blood and then you have kidney tubule and the stuff that goes from the blood into the kidney tubule is called filtrate. That process is filtration. Filtration takes place in Bowman's capsule between, uh, in the renal corpuscle, between Bowman's, uh, the glomerulus, which is the knot of capillaries, and Bowman's capsule. Look and be amazed. Did I tell you the name of the vessel that enters Bowman's capsule? that, look at this. Do you see how I have a blood vessel right here? This is a knot of capillaries. Do you see how this is Bowman's capsule right here? And then what do you think this is? It's a tube that is exiting Bowman's capsule. This is actually the proximal convoluted tubule. So guess what? There's a blood vessel that goes toward the glomerulus. Remember the glomerulus is this knot of capillaries. This, it's going toward the glomerulus. It's called the afferent toward arterial. Now take a look at my afferent arterial. There it is. That's like the diameter of the afferent arterial. And blood enters the glomerulus from the afferent arterial. It goes in and it ends up in this knot of capillaries. Once the blood is ready to leave the knot of capillaries, it leaves another vessel that, look at my diameters. It has a much smaller diameter. And this one is called, you guessed it, the efferent arterial. Arterial. Okay. This is fantastic. Why would blood that enters the afferent arterial and from there goes into the glomerulus and from there leaves via the efferent arterial, why would any of the blood plasma get filtered out at this location? Filtration is this. Filtration is stuff from the blood that now enters the nephron. It now enters the tubule. This is Bowman's capsule right here. And when filtrate, when fluid is found in there, that is your pre-pee. That's your filtrate. That's your stuff that ultimately you will pee out of your body. How much filtration did we have? How much of your blood do you filter every 24 hours? I honestly have no idea if I told you this fact or not, but it's 180 liters. 180 liters of fluid every single day gets filtered out in all the Bowman's capsules and all the glomeruli in your whole system every 24 hours. That's insane. I think I did tell you that. So that's all happening here. How does that happen? Why does that happen? Well, look, 
my afferent arteriole that's letting blood into the glomerulus. Come on in, blood. It's a party in the glomerulus. It's like a little capillary bed in there. Let's have some fun times. Bring all your friends. It's like in my house right now, we opened up the whole back wall and said, dude, whoever's out there, come on in. And like thousands of people started streaming into my house through this giant hole in the wall. Uh, you tell me how long is it going to be before there's going to be uh, too many people coming in. They're all going to come in. I mean, everybody wants to hang out with me. So here they all come. Oh, yay. We get to hang out with Wendy and talk about kidneys. This is awesome. Here they all come. I hope that you recognize that it's not going to be long before the pressure is going to start to rise, especially if the only way to get out is through that window right back there. You can't see it, but it's a little window. So the whole back wall is open. Thousands of people are coming in and I'm only letting them out through the side window. Seriously, whose idea was that? That's crazy talk. What's gonna happen inside my house? The pressure's gonna rise. If I really did make it so that they could only leave through that back window and the pressure is rising, I pretty much guarantee that they're going to start leaking out every other window in the house. They're going to try and find any way possible to get out because they can't all fit out that window, that little window. And they're still coming in. There's more of them coming. Oh my God, my house is getting so full right now. It's crazy. It's so crazy. So how is that even remotely related to Bowman's capsule and the renal corpuscle? Well, the blood all comes in and it's got a really small tube to get out. So either the pressure is going to uh, explode or that fluid's going to get out some other way, and it does. It gets out through the capillaries and into the actual Bowman's capsule itself. From the glomerulus into Bowman's capsule. Some of the fluid escapes that route. It would be like I opened up another couple windows in the other bedroom and said, you know, you can get out here too if you want. And they totally will. And then they'll get funneled into like the backyard. And now I'm going to turn them into pee pee because that will make my analogy complete. Now look, let's go back to looking at this. Here's the glomerulus. The, the filtrate, the fluid, I'll make it, I'll make it kind of reddish so you can see it's coming out of the blood and it's actually entering Bowman's capsule. I think that this, my little half view is a little more visual for like you can imagine that makes sense that if we have all this pressure that fluid is going to enter Bowman's capsule and then from Bowman's capsule it's going to head down the tubes all the way through. Hopefully, we will reabsorb most of that. But how does it even do that at all? How, how do we, why? Why can we filter out so much? Well, the fact is that our capillaries in the glomerulus, look, this is my capillary in the glomerulus. The capillaries are, what do you, what do you notice? Those capillaries are leaky. There are a lot of open windows in my house. Hopefully not, because I'm freezing to death. But here's the other thing about it, and this is really interesting. These cells right here, here, these are part of Bowman's capsule. These are that little part of the bubble right here. See this part of the bubble? That, you're going to love this. This is the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. Does that work for you? The visceral layer is covering the glomerulus. It's covering the capillaries. So. What do you think this layer is called? The parietal layer of Bowman's capsule. Thank you. That makes perfect sense. Parietal, visceral. Look. Here is the parietal layer of Bowman's capsule. That's this whole edge thing. But these funny looking like, what are these things? That's the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. Now these 
The visceral layer of Bowman's capsule is made up of a special kind of cell called a podocyte. Podocyte. And look at these things. They have like these branching fingers that kind of interlock and completely cover the glomerulus. They cover the capillaries themselves, but the capillaries are leaky and there's spaces between the podocytes. All of that allows fluid that's entering the capillaries, that's entering the glomerulus, to exit. And once that fluid exits, it's caught in Bowman's capsule, in the balloon part of Bowman's capsule, and then it's funneled right into the, now it's in the nephron. It's funneled right into the proximal convoluted tubule where we're going to be doing more processing. What else do I need to tell you? I love it. Okay, let's talk about what happens in the proximal convoluted tubule. Hold on, we're not going anywhere yet. Do you agree or can you explain how the structure of Bowman's capsule, 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 enables its function of filtration? I know you can. I will be right back to talk about the proximal convoluted tubule.